Uh, this is going to be the collaborative lesson bank training. It is the ultimate classroom hack. Um, I'm going to introduce myself first. So my name is Sarah Wells. My background's in marriage, family, and human development and sociology. And I taught English in Hefei, China. So that was kind of my Chinese interest. Uh, and also where I met some good friends now, you may meet a little later. And then my work career background was in um, teen residential treatment facilities. And I also worked in elementary schools, uh, doing like uh, specialty groups as a paraprofessional and then in special ed. Then I got married, had two kids. I'm currently in Lehigh, Utah. Um, and then I found out about VIP Kid and have been working for them for about a year and a half now. So I'm on my fourth contract. I'm a mock class mentor and a fast pass coach, and I made the lesson bank, which is why we are here today. Okay, so this is our overview of what we're going to do today. So we're going to talk first, we're, we're going Chinese style. We're starting here to the closest, uh, and we're going to work our, our way away. <laughs> so we're going right to left. So we're going to talk about how you access the lesson bank. Uh, then we're going to talk about the time we spend on lesson prep and feedback, actually the, the stuff we're not getting paid for. And then we're going to introduce the collaborative lesson maker. We're going to talk about what it is, how to use it, and then we're going to get you started with your personal schedule. And then we're going to do some uh, detailed formatting stuff so that you guys know uh, how to make entries and how to also read the entries that are in there. So it's going to be a lot. <laughs> I'm just warning you right now. It is a lot of information. I have tried to simplify it as much as possible, but the reality is, is this is a big resource now. So don't get overwhelmed. We're going to baby step it, uh, but just buckle in and uh, get ready to go because we're going to cover a bunch of stuff today. Okay. So first up, accessing the lesson bank. So first you need to learn the formatting. That's what this workshop is for. Once you attend this workshop, you'll know basically everything there is to know. Um, and then you have to take a quiz. Once you take the quiz, it's not very hard, especially right now. We're going to change that soon, <laughs> but it's pretty easy right now. So if you went to this workshop uh, or you read the document, any of those kinds of things, you will definitely pass it. You can also take it as many times as you want. So if there's one that's tricking you, you'll get there. And then we email you uh, the doc itself. And so you have access. Uh, if you want to go back and revisit anything we've talked about today, you can go to my YouTube channel or search the Collaborative Lesson Bank and all my training videos will come up. If you use this bit.ly link, this, will, this is also a written version of all of this so that you can kind of like cheat sheet for things if you want to find it quickly. Um, and the way you access the quiz is by joining the Collaborative Lesson Bank group and it's pinned on there. In the group, we just want to check to make sure only teachers are accessing the lesson bank, so that's why we go through this quiz and access. Um, the other way is if you're not on Facebook, you probably are because you're here, um, but if not, then you can email me at sarahwells.vipkid at gmail.com and I will send you the quiz. Okay, so now let's talk about the time spent on the stuff we're not getting paid for. So what's your prep time like? And I actually, I want to see some hands, so raise your hand. So who are my Bear grills? You're always prepped. You have it separated. Okay, I see some. Where else are my preppers? You are ready to go with your lessons. Okay, we have some of those. All right. Um, who are my, um, we're for free. Ain't nobody got time for that. Who's this lady? You don't, no prepping, you wing it. It's okay, you can say, okay, thank you, Beatrice. <laughs> we got some wing it people. And the reality is, is without resources, you are kind of forced to choose one or the other. You're either doing a lot of work that you're not getting paid for, or you're winging it, and you're seeing how it goes. Um, the lesson bank <laughs> is sort of the matrix of, what if you could have both? That you don't have to spend a lot of time prepping and doing the stuff you're not getting paid for, but you can still be really uh, prepared and have the resources that uh, help you look as if you did. So let me backtrack really quick and fill in the blank of where it came from. So when I started a year and a half ago, we did not have hardly any resources at all. Like you couldn't see the PPT in the pop that pop-up, seeing it beforehand, you couldn't see that, you had to wait until you actually could load the lesson and then you could go through it, you had to go in the classroom. So it was a, there, it just was a, it was my desire to, that I kept thinking like, wouldn't it be nice if I could see like an outline of the lesson? Wouldn't it be nice if I like 
could write notes and I could keep track of all my students. And so then I could remember, and especially as a new teacher, you're really nervous. You have so many new students coming in. And as an old teacher and you suddenly get a student from a long time ago, you can't remember what they told you about. So it would be nice if you could track that kind of stuff, but have the best of both worlds. That, that wouldn't it be nice if I could just kind of wing my lessons also, but still be prepared. Um, and so that's why I made the lesson bank is I want, I wanted to be able to have both of those. I wanted to be able to do it quickly and not waste my time on the things that I wasn't getting paid for. But I also wanted to be prepared and I wanted a, a system for that. So that's why we made the lesson bank where I made the lesson bank. So really quickly, I'm going to break from here and I'm going to show you my five minutes of prep time. And by that, I mean, you're going to come with me as I prep my lessons for tomorrow because they're not prepped yet. Um, so let me stop the screen share real quick. Switch it to this. Okay, so here's my desktop. Let me move you guys over really quickly and get you out of here. So this is kind of the, the pitch of the lesson bank, is if you spend five minutes or so prepping your lessons, you can have all that information. But it's really not that much. So the first thing you do, I want to have three things open. I want my class schedule, and this is my personal schedule. I want to have the lesson bank open. Um, and then I also want my portal. So this is how, when I'm ready to prep, this is how I prep for the day. So I come here and I want to do these lessons for tomorrow. So I copy this, I come over to the lesson bank, I put my schedule in. This is usually really, ah da da, there we go. Now we're cooking. Okay, so now all my lessons are ready. So I'm just going to grab these lessons, I'm going to copy them out, and I'm going to come to my lesson, my schedule. So this is my personal doc. I'm going to add some more rows on top. And voila, my lessons are prepped, and I have all of my resources there. So that's how long it takes me to prep for my lessons for the next day. Um, I can go through and look through the lessons now and review them if I want. Um, but every, all the resources I need. So that is how long it takes to use the lesson bank. So that's my five minutes. It didn't take five minutes. Um, and regardless of how many classes, that's how long it will take because you're copying your schedule in once and you're pasting it out, in and out and it generates your lessons that, just that quickly. Uh, kind of what it, it looks like um, when, when you're actually teaching. This is how I set up having my lesson bank open at the same time as my lesson. I get this question a lot, but it's really very simple. So here is my lesson. I make sure that I can see the slide number down here and then I can just see the stars. I don't need to see anything else. And then I have my lesson bank open down here below it so I can see the outline, the class, uh, the in notes or in class notes and lesson goals. I can see everything down here below. And then I have my ManyCam up here so that I can use ManyCam during class. And I just fit it so that it all fits in my, um, in my screen. And then I can click through the lesson. I can see everything down here. I can take notes um, as I go along. All right, now let's introduce you to the Collaborative Lesson Bank. Let's talk about what it is. It's essentially a Google Sheet, and not just one Google Sheet, but two Google Sheets. Google Sheet is basically the Excel of Google. Now with these two sheets, you're going to make the personal schedule doc one time. This one is for you, and then you're going to share the Collaborative Lesson Bank. The Collaborative Lesson Bank can be shared by everyone who has access to it. We want your good ideas. We want to collaborate. So this one is shared amongst all the teachers. The personal schedule doc is for you. It's only You're the only person who's going to be using it. You use it or you make it one time and then every day uh, you're going to use the lesson bank to make your schedule and then you're going to use your personal schedule to actually teach with and uh, use in class and we're going to show you what that looks like. Um, so now let's talk about what's in the bank and specifically the tabs at the top. So it's a collection of VIP kid lessons. We have almost every single lesson. We don't have all of them, especially uh, the upper half of unit level six. Those are pretty rare lessons to teach. And so those ones are uh, a little more few and far between, but pre level two, level three, we have basically all of those. Um, and then level four and five have a couple missing, but we have almost all of the lessons. 
Um, and then we have all of the PPT details, information, and tools needed to improve your teaching with each of the lessons. We also have the automatic schedule generator, so that thing that you just saw, <clears throat> so that instead of having to copy each lesson and get that information, you go to, as you saw, you go to VIP Kid, you copy your schedule that you want to do, you put it in the collaborative lesson bank, it automatically generates all of the information for each of your lessons specifically, and then you put that into the schedule, into your personal schedule doc. So your doc that you're using in class, you're not looking up lessons in between lessons, it's every lesson you're doing and you're just doing your schedule specifically. And then you can take notes specifically to your students and have all of your information saved. So that's kind of what uh, the tabs um, in general are. But we also have a new 2.0, and this one is very exciting. Um, we also have uh, resource banks in there. So we teamed with Mary Clayson, she's here. Mary, you wanna say hi? Or maybe she's doing kids, because <laughs> that's- No, she's, he she's here, she- <laughs> I don't know. It's Sorry, I had it. I had it muted because <laughs> my kids keep running in and out. Um, uh, yes, so I have started helping Sarah about three months after she started the bank, and so I started helping her <clears throat> develop that and update it. But then um, something I've been doing on the side was I have my own collaborative bank of tips and tricks, where people are collaborating together and putting in their own things. Um, should we just watch the video and it'll yeah. kind of explain it? Hello everyone, this is a quick introduction to the new Teaching Tips and Tricks column in the Collaborative Lesson Bank. So you can see it is right by the bank feedback and we are trying to put in tips to go with every lesson and we want everyone adding their tips. So you can see on this first lesson, the tip is show mouth placement close to the camera when showing silly sounds and animal noises. So that was just a tip for that lesson. But there are YouTube videos and lots of things. So please make sure to check out that new feature. Now what also is happening is at the bottom of the bank we have let's find it tips and tricks. So this is a bunch of tips and tricks that are being uh, collaborated on where people can put in according to keyword so you can see that this has ability versus permission with the helping verb can and we have Michelle Tullis, Samantha Johnson, Ellery Ford um, and we have videos and things from VIP Kid and we have people working on and it goes by keyword so you can search for birthday, bossy e, cake, lots of different things that are in the lesson so you can search by keyword. The other thing is we have VAP Kid questions and procedures. So this is information from VAP Kid, like about their app, um, their applicants for performance paper, how to boost your teaching profile, building your business, and it's by all these different people with videos or resources. Hopefully this helps you. Let us know if you have any questions about the new tips and tricks part of the Collaborative Lesson Bank. Yeah, say what? All of that information just at your fingertips at the bottom of a tab. So if you have any questions about how to teach something or do something or you need a tip and trick or you have something great that you want to share, bada bing, bada boom, it's all right there. Mary, do you want to say anything else? You can say. There that. was, but then I started reading questions on the side. And so I'm trying to. <laughs> uh, yeah, so basically it just, uh, not only do we want people helping to update the bank, but also putting in their tips. Now these are just suggestions. So if they work for you, great. If they don't, add what works for you because everybody teaches differently. Yeah, totally. Um, the next thing that we have, Mary, thank you for answering the questions. We just teamed up with 2.0. We teamed up with Elise Neville to bring a digital resource bank. So she's kind of the guru of digital. She started the digital uh, at VIP Kid, and we teamed up with her to bring, if you're a digital user like ManyCam or SparkoCam or Cam Max or <laughs> any of those, uh, we teamed up with her so that you can quickly and easily get digital ideas for each class, and we also have a bank. So um, if you're not familiar, it's basically just a way to implement digital props or rewards or visuals inside your video feed. Uh, so then you can do fun prop system or reward systems or how different props to explain things. Ellie, do you want to take that away? Here you'll see this column called New Digital Rewards and Props. It's just getting fleshed out, but what you'll find in here are links to rewards you can use in ManyCam. So um, I have my ManyCam up here. 
I'll just really quickly show you what that looks like. So here are the rewards that are getting fleshed out for each lesson. Specifically, we try to have the lesson, uh, the reward directly associated with the lesson. And where they're not fleshed out already, you'll see in the tabs below here, this digital props and rewards bank. And just like Mary's, these are organized by uh, subject, by topic. And so if you have a lesson on colors, you can click on this link, for example, which will open up a new tab, which brings me to my ABC Yeah Make a Cake reward. Sneak peek, we're also teaming up with the Google Slides people presently. It's just in the workings uh, to bring those to the classroom as well. If you are interested in getting into digital, digital effects and digital reward systems, it's a little bit overwhelming <laughs> from starting on the outside. However, Ellie has made it super simple. So you figure out how to download Minicam and how to just start using it in its most basic form. And then all of that is included with the lesson. So there are ones that specifically work with lessons and ones just by she, how she showed you the bank of it. Um, so you can search those. So then it just makes it so much easier. So I have a couple other uh, resource things like uh, A.B. Chan's uh, feedback translations, uh, tips and tricks about that. So there's just uh, resources, 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 resources at the bottom of the bottom of the bank. Okay, now let's talk about what's it, what lesson information is in the lesson bank. So those columns at the top uh, that we've referenced and talked about, but let's talk about more specifically everything that's in there. So as far as the lesson details go, we have an outline of the PPT. So slide by slide, every single slide that's in um, the lesson, we have an outline for it. And it's at a glance, it's quickly, there's just short abbreviations, so that at a glance, you can look down at that as you're teaching, and you can see the entire lesson. So you don't have any more of those trickster lessons that come and get you, like, ooh, Ellie, what was the one you were saying this morning? Oh, oh the one that always messes me up is the, um, five well, little monkeys. Them, the five little monkeys. And also, the opposite <laughs> way, the dice. <laughs> yeah. So you get there and you're like, oh, there's a lot of slides. And you get there and they're like, oh, it's the dice. And it's like 20 slides of dice that only take two seconds to click through. Um, or you get there and it's five little monkeys at the end and you're like, oh, I need like 20 minutes for this dang song. But you've only allotted 30 seconds for it. So you can see all of that at a glance. So you can kind of have a feel for the lesson. So uh, you're not the rainmaker. You don't have it memorized, especially if you're teaching for like six hours. You don't have 12 lessons memorized. So in that way, for that lesson, you can have an overview at a glance of everything that's in the lesson. This will help your pacing and class management and the lesson management um, so much. This is one of the biggest things. Next, we have the VIP Kid goals, which are the objective vocabulary sentence patterns and, gr and grammar. You know those things that you memorize for the mock and then haven't really looked at again? Yeah, those. <laughs> Having it right next to um, your notes and your information in the class right there helps increase the, uh, uh, the chances that we'll see it and we'll actually be able to implement those and focus on those in the classroom. Um, then we have the VIP Kid Reward Systems. Uh, you don't have to do those, of course, but just what's included in case you are going to use them. And then also you can just supplement in what you did use. So then you can track what reward systems you've used with which students. Then we also have the warm up and the end songs. So if you want to grab the music for it or if you add the ukulele or whatever you do, then you can quickly see those without having to enter the classroom or look up the lesson. So the other tools that we have um, included in the lesson bank, we have in-class student notes. So this way, you have the ability to take notes about your student, about um, their and their performance in class really quickly because it's just right there. And then it's saved. So every class you've ever taught, if you were using this since day one, you could keep it and you can filter it by the student so you could see a student's learning progression all in one, one shot in your personal file. 
we also have listed um, suggested props. So uh, this isn't saying by any means that you have to have all of these props, but any prop that would be useful, we try and include in that. So then if you have a dog, a cat, and a mouse, then great, you can grab those really quickly and you know that. And you can look at that even 30 seconds before the lesson, but oh yeah, okay, for this lesson, and then have them ready to go. The second, as we've talked about, is the digital rewards and props. So we have those listed rewards <clears throat> if, you're use, if you're a digital user. Then we have teacher to teacher notes or teacher to self notes. Um, this, the first one is teaching tips and tricks. So maybe I have an amazing way I teach Boss E, which is true, I do, that's why it's listed, and it works. It always is, always is a fun uh, hit with the students. And so then I can share it with you, so then you can see how I'm teaching Boss E, and be like, ah, oh, great idea. And then maybe you teach something else phenomenally, and you can share that with me. So then we have quality teaching across the board. We can share all those tips and tricks for specific things in uh, each lesson. We also have the lesson notes. So so these are notes about the lesson, the kinds of things that you wish you would have known going into it that now you know because you're done with it. So a note to yourself and to every other teacher about how maybe this lesson's a little bit sparse and you need to have some extensions or it's packed so you got to keep your pacing and keep moving or you'll never get through. So we have those kinds of heads up. Or maybe there's just a tricky slide so the wing it people. This is a big one for you because there, maybe there's a hard slide that you need to read those teacher to direct directions because when you get there, you just have no idea what they're asking for. That's another thing that the lesson notes are great for. Then we have feedback templates. This is another really big one. So this is not a copy and paste. Um, and so it's non-personalized, not at all. This is everything. This is the lesson bank is about stopping, uh, not recreating the re the wheel. So, this is all the niceties of like, oh, it's so nice to see your student in class today. Today we talked about, and then we have a written overview of the lesson. It's non-specific, it's completely generic. And then you can go in um, and add in that feedback uh, that you took. And I'm gonna show you how we do that in just a second. So then you can still have really personalized feedback and it's very clear to your parents that you have a, a learning path and you were in like very engaged with their student. Um, and that really goes a long way with parents having that kind of feedback. But because it's in a template, it's fast. It is so fast, like two minutes or less. So I, very easy to write in between classes, um, all of them, or at the end of the day, you can just bust them out really quickly. Okay, so that was our how. Now we're gonna talk, oh, now we're going to our how. That was our what, now we're on our how. Okay, so this is, the, your schedule. So again, notice that it's blue, indicating that this is your personal schedule, not the bank. The bank is in orange. I think BAP kid orange, collaborative orange. <laughs> Everyone's in orange. But blue means you. This is your personal one. Um, and then we're, I'm going to give you a tour of kind of how you break it up so it's not so overwhelming because it's a lot of information, but it's really quite simple. So before class, I'm looking at these columns. I'm looking at the props and notes to make sure I understand and know everything that's in there. I'm looking at those um, suggested digital rewards, <clears throat> if I'm a digital user, what the reward system is, and the warm-up end song, and if there's a teaching tip. So, oh, this is a great way to teach A versus Anne. Okay, great. So, this is what I'm looking at before class. Then, during class, I'm looking at the lesson outline, the in-class notes, and the student goals. So <clears throat> I have these three right under my lesson so I can see the entire lesson at a glance. This is my area where I can take notes for my student. I can jot them down really quickly. I can, what they're struggling, developing, mastered. And we just included uh, student information so if they tell you like, oh, my favorite color's blue. I love transformers. That's where you're gonna slap that information. Um, and then your lesson goals are right there as well so you can stay focused on what's the priority for the lesson. Then after class, I'm gonna to go to the feedback. And at the feedback, I'm gonna write that, as you can see, it says, today we continue to learn about life on the farm, your child, blah, 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 blah. It's all generic, it doesn't have any performance reviews. Um, but then we have a find and replace feature. So all you have to do is control, you copy this just to the next one over, do control H, and then you, you take your child and put in their name. So automatically, it just trans uh, personalizes it with that. And then you grab your in-class notes. And because you already took those notes, you jotted them down during class, and they're saved there. It's really easy to quickly write a performance review in the feedback right there. And then you have fast feedback. All right, so now let's talk about the personal schedule and make it. Um, and to do that... 
I'm going to introduce myself. <laughs> this video is about 10 minutes long. It goes completely into how to get started, how to get it going, and how to use it. So that's why it's a little bit long. All right, here we go. Hello, everyone. I am so excited to introduce 2.0 to you. Okay, so here's what we did with 2.0. We took away some things that we felt like were cluttering um, the lesson bank, and we also added some things that we felt like were missing. So I'm going to run through the basics, and I'm going to show you the exciting things we added, um, and I don't think you'll even miss the things we took away. So you go to lesson the lesson bank 2.0, you come down here to presently the fourth tab. It might change, but it is named personal schedule template. And you want to make a copy of this template. And it's very simple. You just have where you want it to go. So if you don't already have a Google Drive, let's go over that right now. <laughs> so you have to go to Google Drive. That's the first thing. So just type Google Drive. You need to have a Google account, I think. You probably do. Then you go to Google Drive, go to Google Drive. Here's your Google Drive. This is my Google Drive. And I want to do new. And I want a new sheet. New Google Sheet. <gasps> dun, 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 dun. Here's my new Google Sheet. And I'm going to name this my lessons. Whoa, sorry. New keyboard. Um, you can name it whatever you want to name it. Now you're set. Now, when I go to 2.0, now all I have to do is come to this personal schedule template, right click, come on up here to copy to, boom shakalaka. Now I'm going to go to recent because I just barely did it. <gasps> My lessons, the doc I just barely made. Yeah. If you already have one, like if you're a long time lesson banker, just find your, um, like mine is called my class schedule right there and you can add it to that so then you just click my lessons select dun 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 successful so now I come back over here to my lessons tab and you're like, wait it's not here sir it didn't work <gasps> look at the second tab it always comes up as a second tab so you can just go right ahead and right click on this sheet one go up to delete get rid of it you don't even need it boom now here it is and you don't need it to be copy of you can just double click on that delete it personal schedule template you can name it <laughs> maybe not template because it doesn't need to be a template you can just be um, 2018 because that's what it is right now who knows if it is when you're watching it can be whatever it is whatever you want it to be it can be that you can do it by months you can do it by years you can do one forever doesn't matter um, but now you have your drive. So now what I'm going to do is I come to VIP kid and you go to your classrooms tab and here are my lessons and I'm going to do February 5th. So I highlight all my classes for February 5th. I always do it the day before so that if they, it decreases the chances that they suddenly change their classes because it's the day before. Um, but it's also not the night before or the morning of, then that's too, too soon. So you highlight all of them, right click, copy, or you can do control C, either one. Now you jump back over here to the lesson bank and you go to schedule maker one or schedule maker two and you check to make sure no one's in them. If someone's in them, give it a couple minutes, they'll be done soon. If no one's in it, like right now, it's free. So now I'm going to click on the top and I'm going to do control V or you can right click and paste. And as you can see, whoa, what's happening? <gasps> it's automatically generating. Woohoo! So you don't have to go lesson to lesson to lesson and fill it out. It's just automatically generating and just let it go. And you'll know that it's done uh, when you go down to like your last one and there's information added. So then all you're going to do is you're going to highlight them. So you can just select the top row, scroll down here to the last row, and you just do control. Nope, shift. Ignore, ignore. So click the first one, scroll down to the last one, and do shift, and click it again. So now you've highlighted all of them, right? And now we're going to right click, and we're going to cut. Or you can do control X. Cutting out of here, 
And now we're going back over to the new document you just made, my lessons, and you're gonna go to the top. If you already have something in your lesson, your yesterday's lessons, then all you're gonna do is you're gonna select it and you're going to again click shift and select a chunk of rows. I always do over rather than exactly because it's easier. I don't like doing exactly. So you highlight that many, you right click and insert 14 above and you can't see it but it just added 14 above and we're always adding on top so that you're working your way to the top and at the top you're done with your day. So you're adding more sections so you're working your way to the top and then that way all your old lessons are saved and they just go to the bottom rather than having to scroll, scroll, scroll. Ugh, don't do that. So now you select your top one and you right click and this is the important part. You either do right click, special, paste and do values only or as you can see control shift V. If you just do control V it's not going to take the generated uh, data that you that made your schedule. So you're gonna select it and either do again right click, paste special, paste values only or Control shift V and then voila now before you click anything don't unclick it because all your stuff is highlighted and see it's crazy it looks crazy this is not helpful to anyone so here's the formatting that'll make it look nice first get rid of the borders so no borders then we're going to come to the alignment and we're gonna do it to the top and then come right here to text wrapping and wrap your text <gasps> Ta-da! Looks really nice now. Now as you can see, it still is like a little spread out and weird. And that's because everything will, everyone will have a different preference of how big they want it. So for me, I want the student's name to be smaller. And I don't really care about, whoops, this, ay ay ay, the schedule time. So I'm just going to scoot the schedule time way over. And I don't care if it's short notice. I don't care about the book. And I'm going to show you another trick with that too. Um, so, for example, if I don't care about short notice, which I don't, you can select the whole thing, right click, dun, 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 hide column. <gasps> it's still there. If you want it, you just click this little arrow and it'll open back up. But if you're never going to care if that's a short notice booking, if you do, like if you're a money tracker, then don't hide it. But if you aren't tracking your money for some reason, well, I don't track my money. The AP kid does, but I know some do. That's cool. Then don't hide it. But I'm going to hide it, and I'm going to hide the status because I also don't care about that. Then look, now I'm just cleaning up. And if there's one like you're like, I never care about warm ups, great, hide it. If you care about them, leave it. So then you kind of can personalize what you can see, and it'll still copy and paste perfectly. It won't change any of that. You don't need to worry about that. It'll just hide it from view right now. So now I have this and maybe I want this a little longer. Also, I can see the lesson goals are making it really long. So I'm going to make that a little wider and definitely this parent feedback I can tell. So see, I'm going to scoot that over. So now I have the lessons. They're all automatically generated. It was fast and easy. Look, I have all of them. I'm ready to teach a template. So that's how we do the schedule makers. Again, just make sure that you go back after and delete it so the next person knows that they can go into it. The things to know are give it a few seconds as it's generating. It'll usually take about 10 seconds to generate depending on how many lessons you have. Um, also just make sure that you're not overlapping and uh, just give yourself time. And then at the end, again, please just come in, delete your lessons. Just come to like the trials, again do the control F, type in that SN code right here, sorry it's a little off so you can't quite see it, and then find in the sheet, and then just highlight it, and highlight the bright orange, so from here, trigger, 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 over, copy that, and then paste it over um, into your lesson, and the you're professional now, good job guys, and it saves so much time, it is truly the thing I've been the most excited about, because it's just... 
boom fast now. So now let's talk about formatting. Um, I'm going to give you a quick tour about how we format each place so that you can read it, but then also so you can enter. The idea is we want everyone to be contributors, um, and you are a contributor. As soon as you have access to the lesson bank, you are a contributor and you can um, edit it. Hi everyone. Now we're going to talk about how to format the lesson outline section. Um, this is the most technical one, but it's so easy, so don't get overwhelmed by it. So a great place to go if you ever have a question to know if it's right or wrong is go to the doc orientation. And I have one fully filled out here. So we're going to be looking at this lesson outline right here. Each slide needs to have an entry. We want to start with the number and then we want to put a colon and then we want a brief abbreviation, just a small abbreviation of what's on the slide. So what vocabulary words are taught, or uh, maybe what letters are being taught, or what's the content, or maybe it's a reading slide, just something that tells us what's on the slide so you could find it quickly if you knew it was on the slide, where it was on the, or where it is in the lesson. So you want the number, the colon, a brief abbreviation, and then we separate slides by semicolons. We continue this pattern as long as it's on the same topic, but as soon as it changes topic, we go to the next line, which is control enter on um, a PC. So if you're on the line, you just do control enter and that'll go down to the next line. If you're on a Mac, it's command enter. So we just follow that pattern all the way through. So number, colon, brief abbreviation, semicolon, the number, colon, brief abbreviation. Once it's a new topic, new paragraph, number. <laughs> it's, it's really that simple. There's nothing more to it. Um, there are other tips and tricks that will help, <coughs> excuse me, things like uh, the like warm-up slide or the titles of the slide. We don't really care about those so much. We mostly just want like, which ones have you seen? That's the target sentence. The next one is about domestic animals. Then we're here about chickens. Then we're going to learn about pork. And then we're going to learn about beef. And now it switches to blind and then we're going to learn about help and as you can see the ni the numbers of the slides are on each of them um, and when you just keep going sometimes when there's reading and it's over a couple of slides you can just put read colon and before it have the slide number so 12 and 13 read and then the name of the reading and then usually there's comprehension questions after so then again put the number and then comp question mark s <laughs> comp questions um, that helps uh, just keep it shorter and since it's such a common thing. Other ones are Fitbe for fill in the blank. That's another really common one. Um, and then SW stands for sight words. That's another really common one. I'm trying to think if there are any other common ones. It'll, you'll just see them a lot. And then also at the end, make sure you put the goodbye slide and the blank slide. Uh, that way we have an entry for every single slide. It's num every single slide is numbered and what's on it. So and that way it's really quick. It's easy. If we keep to this formatting, then everyone can look at it and know exactly what's on the slide. We don't need to have uh, one all the way down. If it's on the same topic, have it continue um, within the same paragraph. And that's it. Let us know if you have any questions. Thanks, guys. All right. Next up, we're gonna be be we're gonna be talking about the in-class student notes. So this part is really very simple. All it is, um, it will come with struggling, developing, and mastered, and and then you fill in notes. That's it. It's that simple. So if your student is doing great with something, put it in the mastered. If they're working on it and they still need to keep working on it. But they're doing okay put it in developing and if they're really having a hard time and it maybe needs to get a little more extra attention then you can put it in the struggling and the nice thing about taking notes as you go is that it's much more professional and your feedback is more meaningful because then you're giving specific details you have specific words that you're working on I always like to keep track of any words that they have a hard time with and so then at the very end I can go over those words really quickly with them and re-pronounce them for them. Um, so then in parent feedback you can copy these over into the feedback and it's and it's a quick immediate these were the words we worked on today. This is how they're doing on vocabulary. This is how they're this is how they did in the lesson. You copy that over and then the parent has 
a specific list of the words that they're doing great with or the topics they're doing great with, they're struggling, or that they're developing. So it's a really nice way. And then you can even say, we reviewed all the words that they were struggling with or working on at the end of the lesson. Please review at the very end. So then your parent doesn't even have to go and find it throughout the lesson. It's all right at the end. So that's the student notes. Simple as that. Okay, lesson goals. This is just copied and pasted from the VIP Kid website. So you go to VIP Kid, you go to the classrooms, you go to the materials. In the materials, we have this nice section called the class info. We copy it and we paste it in. So we could actually do this one. Let's update it. You can see it live. So you copy that number, you come over to the bank. We're going to uh, control F, which will control find it. Paste in there, see? Oh, this is the old one. Fantastic. So now we're updating it. We just highlighted it. They put in the new vocabulary words, so all of them are updated now. So we want to make a good effort to come back here. See, my green is highlighted, so we just highlight this. And control V. Boom shakalaka. Easy as that. Then we have all our lesson goals. They're right next to the outline, right next to the student notes. There it is. So then we know what's our objective, what vocabulary words should we be hitting, what sentence patterns, and what grammar are we working on. So then you can really hit it. All right, that's it. Hey! All right, now we're talking about props and reward systems. So in this section, we're going to be talking about actually all three, the props and notes, the digital rewards and props, and the reward system, because all three of these kind of go together. And honestly, the teaching tips do too, but we're going to talk about those separately. So props and notes. This section is for all of those things you wish you would have known going into the lesson, or if you prepped really well, all the things you figured out at the glance of your eye to the screen. <laughs> so on this one, Mega Mike blank calendar. Uh, this, that, these, those. And you can break it down by slides or you can just make it short. Extension questions. Those are in other great ones. Um, the more you add, the better. So don't just list what you had. List anything that anyone might have that might be useful. So if it goes over letters or vocabulary words or the content that, you know, that there's props in it, pictures in it, that it'd be nice to have that kind of physical reward. Anything in there, please add it. Also add the notes. So the notes are, uh, this has a lot in the lesson, so make sure you keep moving. Or this is a pretty bare lesson, so have lots of extensions. All of those kinds of notes and props uh, entries are really, really helpful. The next section is our new section, which I'm very happy about. This is our digital props and rewards. So if you have a digital for ManyCam or SparkoCam or the other ones that might come up later, I already know there are ones, but I can't remember their names. I use ManyCam. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> this is for reward systems that relate to the lesson or props that relate to the lesson. So link them to your Google Drive or link them to the website, like if it's an ABC, yeah. Uh, reward system that relates perfectly to the lesson this is where you give us the address so that ideally we could come you could open up your uh, your like mini cam right before the class and you could add in all set up all your reward systems have them ready to go and then you would have these really awesome um, reward systems that you didn't have to go and think about and do all the work for and recreate the will stop recreating the will we can help each other out so that's, and these are pretty bare because this is a brand new section. So like this one, oh, greater than, less than, equal to. Sweet, because it applies to the lesson. So there aren't very many of them, but we're going to be really adding, 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 adding. So uh, more to come on that front. And then the last one is the reward system. And this is just the reward system that VIP Kid offers up. Usually they're not very good. Hopefully they get better, but they're not good. So... Um, we just put the the backdrop or the background forward slash the manipulative. So like, for example, with this one, it would be monkey forward slash banana because manipulative background, background, manipulative. You guys get it. Um, 
And don't feel like you actually have to use those. You do not have to use those. You can use whatever you want. And also, don't feel like in your personal schedule, you have to keep those in. Don't keep those in. I always delete this and put in what reward system I did with my student so that then I can look back at my day with them and see what I've been doing with them in it. There's a log. It's also a really good uh, trick to put that in your feedback, to put like the last line, what reward system you did so that uh, other teachers can see what reward systems they've been doing and you also know what reward systems you've been doing. So that's another uh, tip for reward systems. So these are our props and notes, digital rewards and props and reward system categories. So pretty simple. These ones are really fun and really, really nice as a heads up uh, just for yourself if you teach the lesson again and definitely for the 30,000 presently and will definitely be different <laughs> really soon. Uh, 30,000 other teachers. All right. Next up, we have our warm up and end song. This is, these two are the easiest ones of all to fill out because you just put what the warm up is and what the end song is. And it doesn't have to be anything special. If you want to link a, a link to the, like a YouTube song, or a YouTube video, so if you want a little tune to it, or maybe you're into the ukulele and you want to put in the tabs for it, or a guitar, or something like that, those would be great additions to it. But otherwise, it's just what the warm-up is and what the end song is, if there is one. And if there isn't, you just put like this, no song, or none, whatever you want. Just let us know. That's it. All right, this is one of our new sections, and I'm very excited about this section. So we partnered with Mary Clayson and her Tips and Tricks page, which is a collaborative effort of anyone who wants to give you a tip and trick, um, to add tips and tricks about teaching. So maybe in this lesson, I haven't even looked at it, there just is something here. Um, so this is, oh, okay, level three, unit four, when you're learning about the animals and how they move, that kind of thing. But we also talk about ability versus permission, or permission versus ability. So if you have a great way of teaching something, make a little video of it and share it with us so that if I'm stumped on like, how do I teach this? Or I'm so sick of how I'm teaching it. Now I have a resource of how you guys are teaching it and then it helps me out as a teacher. And the things I'm rocking on, then I can help you out as a teacher. So then we just find all these great little tips and tricks with each other uh, to help each other. So like this one, um, I already know this is Mary Clayson's because she's been working on this. So then you can just go to it if I can highlight bloop 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 um, and then you can just tap throw that in before the lesson give it a little watch today we are talking there about the helping is. verb can helping verb can so and there's Mary this ignore my weird line on my screen so that's a great oh <laughs> that's what the new teaching tips are they're just tips and tricks from teachers for teachers about clever little ways that you teach specific things that are in the lesson so that we can all help each other out all right now we're at feedback. Feedback is the thing that no one wants to waste their time doing, and I know you are. I know you're wasting way too long on writing feedback and you're not getting paid for it. So let's stop doing that. Let's start writing amazing feedback and helping each other out and stop recreating the wheel each time for these kids. Because the lesson is the same for every kid. It's just their performance that changes. So that is what the feedback is all about. We write skeletons of what is in the lesson so that then we can write just the performance review and everything else is this beautiful, wonderful, nicely written. All the niceties are done and the outline of the lesson is right there. So all you have to do as the teacher who just taught the lesson is hopefully you took notes in the notes section and you can look at your notes and then you come in here and you look and you just decide which one you want to pick. And I'm, and I'm just gonna say I'm picking this one. And I'm gonna show you how it's done first and then I'll tell you how to format it. So then I just take this and I'm gonna copy it. And I don't wanna change the one here because then it makes it really hard to go and uh, put it back in the lesson bank afterwards. And ideally that's what we're doing. So then we just go over to the side, the one that's not. And then we have this key at the bottom. So on PCs we do Control H 
and that will bring up the find and replace. If you're on a Mac, you do command shift H. And I always think, help, help me write my feedback. <laughs> and so that's how I remember H. So then you write in the find and you just follow that key. So on here it says your child with a lowercase u. You need to be um, capital or lowercase, big or small, specific. So we need to do your child and pretend my student's name is Sunny. And we want the specific range, so always make sure that you've selected the right range, you're not on some other weird cell beyond the specific cell, and then click specific range. And we want to match the case. If it's a lowercase, uh, if there are both the lowercase your child and uppercase your child, and that's it, and it's name, then you don't have to be uh, case specific. You don't need to match that case. But if it is like this one, it only has the lower your child. So then I'm going to be, um, I'm going to match the case. Then I just do replace all. Two instances came up. And then the other one is he, she. So I'm going to type it exactly how they do it. So if it's lowercase or uppercase, again, you want to be really specific about that. He, she, and I want sunny. I could do she, but I want sunny. So I'm going to replace that. Oh, it doesn't say there is any, so we should better check that. Oh, because there's an asterisk by it. So see, you got to be careful with your writing, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so again, I'm on here, and then I'm going to replace all. And it's the, oh, because I didn't follow it. So good example. See, I'm being a good example by being a good bad example. So it's capital he forward slash lowercase she. So see? We're all doing it together, so don't think you got to be perfect, because you don't. Um, now I'm going to replace it with Sunny. Then we do specific range, match that case, make sure I'm on it, specific. There we go. Ding, 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 ding. Now I have this all filled out. It's all, sp it's all, I was happy to teach Sunny today, blah, 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 blah. Then all I have to do, I can be done with this, I delete this one, Brent. And I just write the specific thing. So, uh, great job today. Now, oh, and see, this was a pause one. So, Sunny read fluently and did very well answering the comprehension questions at the end of the story. Great job. So, I'm going to come sneak in right here. I'm going to say, she um, could continue to work on what's in this lesson. Oh, using... Sun, snow, and white in full sentences. And I'm a slow typer, so if you're a fast typer, it'll be even faster. And and then that's good, because she did a great job. She needs to do that. Great job today. And I'm just going to add in my name, Teacher Sarah Wells. And then, look, ta-da, copy. I'm going to open up my feedback. But I'm not going to really because I don't have any. Um, but I would open it up and then I highly, highly, highly suggest using Grammarly. Paste that in there, open up the little Grammarly bubble, and then you can use Grammarly. It's just a Chrome extension that you can download and add and it's quick and it's easy and it uh, corrects both your grammar and your spelling. So then you can check your spelling and then submit. And boom, it's as easy as that. So take the skeleton, do the find and replace, add in the performance with how your student did. I did a bad job because I didn't have a student named Sunny who took this lesson. It was a made up one. And then you copy and paste it over. And then the parent, what the parent gets is this beautifully written outline of the lesson and performance review of how they did. But really it only took me like 45 seconds, 30 seconds, so I can definitely do it in between classes, especially if I already did my lesson bank prep the night before, then it's definitely ready, and I'm just copying, pasting it over once I put in that performance review, and it's fast and easy. So let's talk about the specific things that you can do to make it go even faster. So this one you can see we have a lot of, well let's start with the performance review. So that's the first thing. We always at the bottom we want to make our key. Because some people, it's good to have a basic feedback. And the basic ones are okay. So it just, we want to say something like, I was happy to teach your child today. I was happy to see your child today. Because even if the lesson went wonderfully or poorly, 
we should always be happy to see them. So that is a great way. We don't want to say it was happy. I was happy to meet your child today because what if it was a regular? Or I don't want. It was great to see your child again. Because what if it was the first time? So don't do anything that indicates anything specific about the lesson. Just general. I was happy to see your child because that should be true always. And if it's not, let's pretend like it is. <laughs> so open with that. And if it. If you want to just do fast ones, you can say today our lesson goals were, and then come over here, copy the lesson goals, slap those in, and then right at the end, your child earned five stars, make another space, teacher, and leave it like that. And we always want to write your child instead of he or she, and instead of he or she, do we. We read this, we worked on this, we did this, because in that way it doesn't give a performance indicator. It doesn't say if they could actually do it or not, because maybe I did it as a teacher and maybe they did it. We don't know. Um, so that's a really good way to kind of trick the system is stick to your child and stick to we did this today. So then at the end, because these ones see we have he, she, and the names, but this all could just be your child and then we's, and we don't have to change the we. And you could put in a we and have it for he, she, if it's lowercase or uppercase. The things you just really want to be careful of is make sure when you're setting the key that you've really read through that feedback and you're not giving any kind of weird uh, like saying it's only lowercase, but then it's actually like an uppercase your child, like it started a sentence. Um, or only do the starting of a sentence, and then there actually are ones in the middle of the sentence. So just watch so that any time that comes up, that it works. The other thing is some lessons use sentence, pattern, pa sentence patterns with your child or yours, blah, 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 in it. And, or he, she, for example. And so then we really want to avoid that because we don't want it to find and replace those in the like target sentences rather than if you're just talking about your kid. So uh, those are kind of the find and replace things. The performance reviews, we want to start with an asterisk. And then we want to say if it was a positive performance review or if they were struggling. So it's like, keep working on it. So it should still be positive positively written, but meaning that they struggled rather than they have mastered the skill. So asterisks and then positive if it's like written in a way that's like, oh, she, he read fluently and did very well. So that's a performance review that's positive. So that's why the asterisk is there and the asterisk is in there where it is so that if I'm looking at this, I can look at it and say, oh, that's where the positive performance review is and I want to take it out. It's gone because maybe it's a bad lesson. So I would make a copy of this again, like, and put it in class tags or the alternate parent feedback, just somewhere else, not on the main one, um, on my personal schedule even, so that then I can change it, find and replace, edit it, write my name, write my goodbyes, whatever my thing is, um, and I'm not changing the parent feedback, but if I edited other things throughout the lesson and updated, then I can still copy that as a whole and put it back into the bank, which we'll talk about that in a different uh, post. But this way, feedback is so easy. These are That's all the details that I can give you because that's everything there's to know about it. Write feedbacks that are general about what the lesson content is. Omit all things that indicate how a lesson went at all or if it was a boy or a girl who took it. Just take it all out and say we's and your child. And we don't want to do he forward slash she's either because ideally, say you're in a pinch, it's very nice to be able to just copy this and paste it in and not have to be looking through and if I missed one of them, because if I missed one of the your child's or something, that's okay, your child is an appropriate thing to say, but if it was a he, she, now suddenly I have a weird thing that I'm saying. So. That's why we want it to be as is, your child, we, and then have that performance review and the find and replace. If you take the time to set it up formatting or format it that way in the beginning, then the repeats are fast. It's just copy, find and replace, put in the performance review and copy it back into the lesson bank and it's fast and easy. All right, you guys, that is how to do feedback in under a minute minute is is very great is generous <laughs> and truthfully you can honestly come over here um to your if you did the struggling developing and mastered and just copy that and say today your student 
worked on these specifically and paste those in and make it kind of fit in a sentence and just use that even. And the truth is whatever you put in for the performance review, that is what you can, once you're in the feedback form, I just copy that straight out and put that in the teacher because that's what I want to know in the teachers. What are they doing great on? What are they struggling on? And what are they just bombing? I want to know those things for my next lesson and I want to know what reward. So I'll add in the reward as well. And then you have that. And then that's your teacher feedback. So truthfully, your parent feedback, take what you added and put just that in the teacher. And I initial it so that I know which ones are mine. Boom. Seriously, a minute, maybe two minutes. So if you're getting out of your lesson when you should, you still have a minute to go do 10 jumping jacks. All right, you guys hope this helps and hopes I hope it makes your feedback so much faster that stuff you're not getting paid for should be easy and fast. Okay, so let's wrap up with our awesome takeaways and we'll do a little bit of a Q&A for anything after. All right, so <clears throat> using the lesson bank, your quality goes up while your time goes down. That's really the benefit. You don't have to pick either or with winging it. Um, or having a great prep lesson. You have the resources right there so you can quickly prep for it um, and you're not sp wasting a lot of time, but then you have all of these resources just there automatically every day to increase your quality of teaching. Um, and it only takes about five minutes of prep. That's the reality. You're just, and it's not even five minutes. The truth is we say five minutes, but it's like copy it in, generates there, and then you can do however much like reviewing the slides that makes you uh, feel comfortable. Um, and then you become a VIP Kid Ninja Warrior with your lesson. You, instead of being kind of all over the place, you know exactly what's happening in the lesson. You have all these resources. You have tips from other teachers, that kind of thing. And then afterwards, you have feedback that's fast, detailed, and specific. So your parents know specifically you have a learning path. You're aware of their kid. You remember that they like Batman because it's, it was all there. You're not actually the Rain Man with memory. You just have it all listed there so that it's quick and easy for you. The truth is <laughs> you can wing it, but these lessons come and that stupid blue door will come out of nowhere. <laughs> and then your lesson is kind of a flop sometimes when you just don't have the resources or the stuff there. Um, but instead having the resources in your warrior style uh, makes it really easy. Okay, the other benefit is that it's all organized. Every lesson you've ever taught is there and you've saved it and it's mobile. So you can take it anywhere. You don't have to take your teaching notebook or all your, re all that stuff, whatever your notes, no matter where you teach from anytime, it's all saved there. And then it's also a resource overview. So if you've ever wondered what are, what are in these lessons or what's in that lesson, um, you can look at all of the lessons because all the lessons are listed. And that's another really nice thing about the bank. So again, you no longer have to choose between uh, quality or quantity. So once you're, you are a more familiar teacher and you're, you're teaching six hours in a row, you have 12 lessons, you can't memorize that. And you can't prep all of that stuff every day. That's just unrealistic. Um, so then you can teach really quality lessons, but a, a lot of lessons at the same time. Um, and, and the real point of all of this is so you can wow, wow your parents. Because when your parent gets that kind of feedback and it's that obvious that you're aware of class and you have these resources and your quality will just be up because you have other teaching tips and tricks. And you oh. yes, this is the part I'm really ready. I'm excited for This is new to this version. Are you ready for this? This is dance party time. It's a lot to remember. So we're going to take a little okay. dance party. please go ahead and do, um, go ahead and do that. But you can just go straight to the quiz. Everything in the quiz has been covered today. Can I say one more thing? Yes. Um, I have, 
always been petrified to actually make uh, an update. I mean, there have been a couple of times before, but I just thought if I make it worse, but yeah. I'm not helping anybody. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still kind of there. <laughs> Don't be. I'll <laughs> try to get answer. over that. But. Yeah, get over that.